Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Matthew Charlesworth. Behold, the Lord, the Mighty One, has come, and kingship is in His grasp, and power and dominion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to this solemnity of the Epiphany, the manifestation of Jesus. As we prepare to celebrate these most sacred mysteries, let's call to mind our sins. I confess to, to Almighty God and, and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, Grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. We make this prayer through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall walk by your light, and kings in the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar, and your daughter shall be carried in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because of the abundance of the seas shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, 
Give your judgment to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in the right judgment. All, All nations, nations on earth shall fall prostrate, prostrate before you, O Lord. Lord. In his days, justice shall flourish, and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. All nations shall, shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. The kings of Tarshish and the islands shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. For he shall save the needy when they cry the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. All, All nations, nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, I assume that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Alleluia. 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 We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today the Church celebrates the Feast of the Epiphany. This is the feast where the Magi come to adore the Lord, born on Christmas Day, and bring him gifts of homage in recognition of his true identity. In their adoration of the Christ child, the Lord's glory is revealed for the first time through the guiding of these foreign wise men by a star. Another manifestation of Jesus' glory will be at his baptism, which we'll celebrate next weekend. But it is worth remembering that the first time was in the stable with Mary under the night sky. It's a scene that is famous in art and in many Christian homes, and I'm sure you as well. You will have cribs and nativity scenes with different characters representing the Holy Family, the shepherds, and the Magi, who represent the Gentiles and peoples of all nations. As an aside to parents with young children, the Feast of the Epiphany is also traditionally a time when in some parts of the church presents are given. In fact, you might as a family want to create a tradition where you focus on the religious nature of Christmas at Christmas time, attending Mass, feeding the poor, and being with family, etc., and then the parents can take advantage of the Christmas sales and share your gifts as a family, along with the Magi, on this day at the Epiphany instead. And you make today's feast the focus of your gift-giving and opening presents. It's just a thought. At its heart, this feast is, I think, about inclusion. Notice how Jesus, even as a baby, attracts people, all people, different people from lowly shepherds to mighty kings, and they gather together to worship and adore him. The inclusiveness of what will become Christianity is present at the very beginning, and we need to remind ourselves of that when we are tempted to become exclusive or elite, when we try to close doors rather than open them, when we build walls instead of bridges. In our first reading, the prophet Isaiah speaks of inclusion in the way he describes his vision of a glorious Jerusalem. No longer rejected, no longer God's forsaken one, this rebuilt city not only welcomes home its own refugees and witnesses, but it becomes a confluence of the nations to the whole world. It is a vision of a kingdom that is in stark contrast to the nationalisms and me-firsts of our own world today. We are told to open our eyes, to lift them up, and see how all are gathering together. Unfortunately, their eyes remained closed, and perhaps some of ours do today too. Our second reading admits that this inclusiveness was unknown to the Jewish people before Christ's coming, but now they realize that the Gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. This means that pagans are part of God's plan, and this means that all barriers of separation, division, and exclusion must fall. There is no them and us. There is only God and his beloved creation, all of us together, and present with us is God's Son, who calls and welcomes everyone. The coming of the Magi are also alluded to in the psalm, which says that all kings fall down before him. I'd like us to think about the Magi for a bit, because I think their story is just as important as the story of Jesus, which we have celebrated during this Christmas season. The author of Matthew's Gospel sets up a deliberate contrast between the Gentile Magi who sincerely wished to pay homage to the king of the Jews and Herod who is claiming to be the king of the Jews and refuses to offer homage to Jesus. So I'd like to touch on two aspects about these characters. Firstly, these three kings, traditionally named Balthazar, Melchior, and Gaspar, have made a journey 
a journey at great risk and expense across vast distances to be witnesses to Christ's entry into the world. This journey is often represented by the figures in the crib moving between Christmas and the Epiphany, each day being rearranged and moved closer to their destination. Their journey to Christ is a reminder to us of how faith, perhaps the greatest gift we have, is itself a journey, one that is as much at times a journey inwards as it is outwards. The star reminds us that the faith journey must be one that is appropriately guided, perhaps through a spiritual director or a person you trust, be that a member of the clergy or a layperson. The scriptures, of course, offer guidance, but they should be interpreted and prayed through, and I believe God will guide your conscience as you do so. But this gift of faith which they received was gratefully acknowledged through the gifts they themselves brought to Jesus. They made a sacrifice of their own treasure, time, and talents to offer the Lord, and they did it together as a community. Our faith journey is always in relation to other people. If they were three wise women, perhaps they'd have brought nappies or something useful. But these gifts are actually symbolic. According to St. Irenaeus, the Magi offered Jesus myrrh, which was used for anointing corpses, to indicate that Jesus was to die and be buried for the sake of mortal human beings. They brought him gold because he was a king of an eternal kingdom, and frankincense, which was burnt on the altars as divine offerings, because he was recognized as divine. Several centuries later, Pope Leo the Great hinted that the journey of the Magi to Jesus could be interpreted as an allegory of the journey of the individual soul to God, as the star's light still might penetrate both the human mind and heart, showing it the way to truth. In one of his sermons on the Epiphany, Pope Leo wrote, How did it come to be that these men, who left their home country without having seen Jesus, and had not noticed anything in his appearance to enforce such systematic adoration, offered these particular gifts? It was the star that attracted their eyes, but the rays of truth also penetrated their hearts, so that before they started on this toilsome journey, they first understood that the one who was promised was owed gold as royalty, incense as divinity, and myrrh as mortal. And so it was of great advantage to us future people that this infant should be witnessed by these wise men. Secondly, a close reading of the Gospel texts reveal two emotions at play, wisdom and fear. The Magi, originally described as those wise men who studied the stars and were alert to omens and the signs of God's working in the world, are journeying because of their wonder and curiosity to come and worship the new king, who they believe they will find where the star rests. In the ancient world, celestial signs often heralded the birth of great leaders. Herod, though, is said to be troubled. In fact, he is fearful. Unlike the Magi, who on hearing of a greater king, go to find and greet him, Herod thinks only of himself and his own situation, and is afraid that this new king would take his place. And so he lies to the Magi to try and discover his location and then intends to kill them so that they cannot tell others about him. But God speaks to the Magi in a dream and warns them not to return the same way. Herod, later on, if we continue to read the Gospel story, reacts very violently and orders the killing of all the baby infants. Here we see how wisdom is described as a patient attention to the world and its natural phenomena. Perhaps we might call this science. But also they're listening to dreams and God talking to them, what we might call faith. It is their faith that motivates them to journey towards Jesus, who as the Son of God 
and as St. John tells us, is the word of wisdom or truth made flesh. But we also see how fear causes Herod to lie and then to protect his own power and authority that he perceives is threatened and how he then becomes violent and despotic. How often might we react in the same way when faced with fear? Fear is the enemy of the Christian faith. Remember how often in the Bible, when God makes an appearance, there is an angel or messenger that says, Do not be afraid. Fear is the enemy of truth. It is the enemy of wisdom. It is the enemy of knowing and recognizing God. When we are with God, we are complete and most ourselves. Perhaps the journeying of the Magi was to fill that restlessness in their souls when they realized they were missing something and so sought to seek it out. When we fear, we become unlike ourselves, our true selves. We do things we regret, sometimes even becoming violent. Fear is often at play when we encounter foreigners and sadly is at the root of xenophobic violence. Notice how Jesus calls these foreigners to be the ones precisely who point to the Messiah. They are the outsiders, and yet they know something valuable if only we would listen. In their journey towards Jesus, they are leaving their comforts and their familiar places and people to find something, someone new. They have never met Jesus, but they understand that their lives are not complete without them trying to find the source of wisdom and truth. In this sense, they represent many of us, I think, who are seeking, perhaps even those who seek outside of the formal structures of religion and society. Notice too how the Magi are given a new way home. Let's pray that when we feel discouraged or unsettled, that we might have the courage to try the new ways God is suggesting to us and trust that just like the Magi, we will find Christ there. Let's pray today that we might welcome the foreigners in our midst and that our hearts may, might be filled more with wonder and wisdom at the encounter than fear. And let's pray that we might recognize the signs of God acting in our lives and in both the people we love and in those we find difficult to love. For in that call is our challenge to respond lovingly and inclusively. Amen. In gratitude for the gift of faith, may we profess our creed together as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, the love of God reaches to the ends of the earth. As the three kings were led to the Savior, let us approach the Lord too and humbly bring our prayers to him. For the people of all nations, that they may hear and believe the good news of salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Jewish people, our brothers and sisters, that through their faithfulness to God's word, they too may reach the kingdom. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For people of all faiths and of none, that in this new year they may find God and grow in love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we might live in gratitude and wonder of God with us, and that our hearts never be fearful, but rather at peace with God, who loved us into being. For we are from love, of love, and for love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For those in our midst who are sick or in sorrow, that our support may remind them of God's unfailing compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear us. For those working in frontline services, especially hospitals and healthcare workers, who have kept working during this holiday period, that they may know the patience and love of God for them and their families. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. For our friends and relatives who have died, especially because of COVID-19, that eternal salvation may be theirs. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. For our own needs, for our families, for those who have asked our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God of hope and joy, listen to the prayers of your people who have gathered to celebrate your mighty love. We make all our prayers in the name of Mary's Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of of our salvation in Christ, as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Buti Tlachale and Duncan Soke, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us now in our hearts pray for peace and unity in our families and in those we love and care for. And wherever there is division in the world, let's pray for peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy really that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. 
we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Traditionally at the Epiphany, there is a house blessing that is done, and I'd like to do that now. Let there be peace to your house and to all who live there. Bless, O Lord, this household and family, and allow all of you who live in your home to find in it a shelter of peace and health. Inspire each of you to develop your individual talents and to contribute wisdom and good works for the benefit of your whole family. Make your house a haven for you all and a place of warmth and caring for all your friends who come to visit. Enlighten us all with the brilliance of your epiphany star so that as we go into the world, we might clearly see our way to you and discover you in our work and in our play. This we ask to your glory and in the power of your kingship, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. And I bless this house. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I wish you a blessed Sunday uh, and feast of the Epiphany. I hope that uh, there is peace in your homes and in your hearts as you celebrate this season. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness. May God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.